Module 2 looks at how we can analyze data for quantitative variables. There are two types of variables, categorical and quantitative. Categorical variables are variables that do not have numbers associated with them. Rather, they have words associated with them. For example, a categorical variable could be eye color, brown, black, blue. A categorical variable could also be hair color. A quantitative variable is a variable that has a number associated, for example, your height, that's a number, your weight, that's a number, your GPA, that's a number, hours of sleep you get each night, that's a number. Okay, the next thing we're going to look at, a lot of times it's not easy to really understand what the data is telling us unless we have graphical representation of the data. For quantitative data, which is what our focus is going to be on in Module 2, the two things that really represent data very well to us right now, and we'll be looking at another one later on, the first one is called the dot plot. Now here we have ages of bachelorettes, and that's from the TV show. And if you look at the first graph, a dot plot means for the age of one bachelorette, you look at, you place a dot for the appropriate age. So for example, you have three dots above the number 24. That means there are three people age 24, one dot for each person. You have one dot above the age 29. There's one person age 29 and so on. That's one way of doing it. But a more common way of doing it is we take the age ranges and we break them up into bins and we create something called a histogram. So if you look at the bottom, the same data is now represented with the histogram. So for example, the first histogram goes from 23 and a half years old to 24 and a half years old, really, which means the age of 24. And the age is on the horizontal axis. The frequency for people age 24, you notice that's the vertical axis. And what is the number on the vertical axis? Three. So that is telling you there are three people age 24. Next, the next bin goes from 24 and a half to 25 and a half. So really, we're trying to capture the number of people age 25. And if you look at the frequency, it says six. How many people from the dot plot are age 25? There are six. There are six dots above the age of 25. So a histogram is a way of representing the data much like a dot plot but a histogram usually can give us a little bit better feel for what the data is like. When we describe data there are usually three things that we use for our description. One is the center of the data, two is the variability or the spread of the data, and three is the shape of the data. Well the first thing we're going to look at is the center of the data. There are two ways we can measure center, mean and median. And one is preferable over another depending upon the type of data that you have in terms of the story it's telling you. So let's look at the first thing. The one that everybody would be familiar with is average or mean. And we represent that with the symbol, as you see here, X bar. That's an X with a bar over it. And how do you get the mean or the average? You simply add up the data values and divide by the number of data values. So for example, we have the numbers 1, 5, and 15. So to get the mean or the average, add them together, divide by 3, and that is 7. Now, the median is something entirely different. The median is the middle of the data, where you want 50% of the data below the median, 50% of the data above the median. 
Now let's look at the same numbers, 1, 5, 15. The middle number is 5. Yes, one of the data values can be the median. If the number of data values is odd, the middle number, the median, will be an actual data value. If the number of data values is even, then the median will not be one of the data values, or probably won't be. And what you would do is, you would average the numbers together from the, the, the two numbers in the middle. In this case, we had an odd number of data values, so the middle value is 5. And in this case, the mean and the median weren't very far apart. Let's look at the next set of numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 100. Now here we have something that's called an outlier. It's one number that doesn't seem to belong with the rest of the values. It seems very far away. So let's get the mean again. We add up those numbers. There are five of them this time. Divide by five. The mean is 22. But now the median is 3, the middle number. A very big difference between mean and median. Which number is really more representative of the center? Okay, it's not the mean in this case. When usually when you have outliers, and we're going to call that skewing later on, when you have a skewing effect where you have some numbers maybe all the way on the left or all the way on the right that seem to be removed from the other numbers, in that case, the median does a better job of explaining the center. Okay, so we've looked at center. There were two things, a mean and a median. Okay, let's turn our attention back to mean. Well, the next thing we want to look at besides center is how can you describe the variability of the data? Okay, are the numbers spread out? Are they clustered together? Well, the thing that we're going to use that goes with the mean it does not go with median, only with mean is something called the standard deviation. That's where we want to try to measure the, how the average distance each data point is from the mean. So let's look at this example here. We have four numbers, 1, 2, 6, and 11. So to get the mean, you add the four numbers together, divide by 4, and that gives you a mean value, an x bar value of 5. Now, to get the standard deviation, we're good, I'm going to show you later on how to get it from the calculator. But here, let's come up with three columns. X are the actual data values, 1, 2, 6, and 11. Now, the next column consists of, for each data value, the deviation from the mean. And it's always subtraction in this order. The X value, which is the data value, minus x bar, and x bar is the mean. So 1 minus 5, 1 is the data value, 5 is the mean that we got above. Okay, that is negative 4. Let's look at the data value 2. The deviation is negative 3. Let's look at the number 6. Well, again, 6 minus the mean of 5, the deviation is 1. 11 minus 5, the deviation is 6. Now, here is an interesting thing. Whenever you add up the deviations, they will always add up to zero. So look, negative 4 plus negative 3 is a negative 7, plus 1, negative 6, plus 6, 0. This is not just a coincidence for our data. This will always happen. So if we're trying to figure out like an average distance from the mean for the data points, adding the deviations up doesn't help us. They always add up to zero. So what we're going to do here is we're going to square each of the deviations. Now remember, when you square a number on your TI, even if you have operator input and it shows you a negative number, remember a square is always positive. So, even if it shows you a negative value, remember, when you're filling in your table, like the one I have here, always put in a positive value. What we're going to do is we're going to sum up 
all of the squares. So how did we get to 16? Negative 4 squared. How did we get the 9 in the last column? Negative 3 squared. How did we get the 1? 1 squared. How did we get the 36? 6 squared. Add all those numbers up. 62. Next thing. You're going to take 62 divided. And you'll see why it's n minus 1. n is the number of data points, which is 4. We don't divide by the number of data points as we did for the mean. For the standard deviation, you divide by the number of data points minus 1. 4 minus 1. And then, remember how we squared the numbers in that last column on the right? Well, we sort of have to unsquare it. So we take the square root. You take the square root of 62 over 4 minus 1, and it's said round to one decimal place if you look above. So the standard deviation, which is referred to by the letter S, is 4.5. So the average distance from the mean is 4.5. And again, we only use standard deviation with the um, mean. Okay, now, how could I have gotten the mean and the standard deviation without doing it by hand? Well, that's where our TI comes from, comes in handy. So the first thing we're going to do is, you see the stack button? It's right on top underneath the DEL button. Let's hit the stack button. Okay, next thing we're going to do is we're going to come over and... I'm going to move the cursor down. So you see right here is the cursor. Okay, so no, actually I'm going to keep it at edit. And I'm going to press enter. Now you see there's something there called L1. I'm going to put those values into L1, the 1, 2, 6, and 11. But suppose there were already values in there, and I want to clear that list. L1 is called the list. It's a list of numbers that we're going to do something with. So what I would do is, I would move the cursor, see my cursor is right here, move it up to L1. Okay. Then you would hit the clear button. Then you would hit the enter button. And now the list is cleared. So what am I going to do? I'm going to enter 1, 2, 6, 11. 1, enter. 2, enter. 6, enter, 11, enter. Now you see I have four numbers. Okay, now you see we have four numbers in the list. So we want to do something with it to get the mean and standard deviation. Now I'm going to go back to the stat button. Hit the stat button. I'm going to move my cursor right here to the right, calc. You see now the cursor is for one var stats. That's what we want. I come down here to the enter button and what list do I want to operate on? L1. So hit enter. Keep hitting enter. Look above here, right here. See x bar is 5. What did we get by hand? x bar is 5. Now, standard deviation. That's right here. That's the one that says SX. That is the standard deviation for the sample of numbers. Rounding to one decimal place, what did we get by hand? 4.5. What does the calculator get by hand? 4.5. Okay, mean and standard deviation go together. Now, we also saw before with that example that had the number 100 in it, outliers, numbers far away from the others, influence the mean and the standard deviation heavily. So if we have an outlier, we're not probably going to want to use the mean. What else can we use for the center? Well, we talked about using um, the median. Okay, What measure of variability goes with the median? So we're going to want something so that the outliers don't influence the median very much. Okay, so what we're going to look at next we have 12 numbers here. So this represents the 12 average temperatures for each of the 12 months in St. Louis. Now, before we can get into the measure of the variability, 
There's something called a five. We will now continue in part two of the next video.